Nice judges. Ah, hello, Dan. How are you doing? You're right? you, bro. I'm actually watching the football, mate. This Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver, mate. You can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi, even at the Emirates when you've got a back, big crowd there and everything like that, watching the football. Unbelievable. Easy to set up? Well, it must be if you've done it, mate. Oh, very, very funny. Even abroad you can, like. You can watch all your favourite programmes. It's like being at home, mate. And that's exactly what you guys can do, too. Click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN. Yes, people, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. Me and Lee Judges are back, and we thought we'd do a little bit of interaction with you guys tonight. Um, over what has been a couple, well, it's been a very strange week <laughs> when it comes to Arsenal Football Club. It has not been the best. It's not been too positive. It's definitely some negativity around at the moment due to the fact that Arsenal have not been playing at their best. There's definitely been some problems when it comes to tactics on the pitch, team selections, substitutions, Mikel Arteta. You can keep going. Everything's pretty down and um, in the dumps at the moment, Lee. And I know that you were over there and you've literally just come back today. So, um, what was it like over there? I'll start, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll start on a positive. The away fans. I could hear them the whole time. Now, I was at home watching it, so it's different for me to yourself. But I thought they were absolutely elite, world class. Because for me, that is what you ask for. When you go there, you have to make a noise. Um, they did their best to shut us up in terms of the performance. But... Actually, the fans were really loud. And I think they drowned out most of the Bayern Munich fans most of the game. So, um, fair play to you guys. Um, but unfortunately, the players didn't give you much to shout about, Lee, particularly going forward. What did you make of it? No, that's true, Dan. Uh, first and foremost, you know, big up to the fans. Because I'll tell you what, like, when you go to the away European games, there is a little bit more shall I say, uh, alcohol consumed on an away European trip than probably not a normal one. You know, they get there early and go to the square and everything like that. And then they're still in full voice um, during the game. And let me tell you now, it was freezing yesterday. It was really, really cold yesterday. So a big up to the fans. Chucks up into the gods again, which uh, I, I, I'm getting a little bit fed up with Like when I see that. And, and you're up there, out of the way. You can't really enjoy the game and the atmosphere if I play because you can hardly hear the the, the um the the home fans uh, and then when they come to the Emirates they're all nicely you know in the bottom tier and, and having a, a whale of a time. So I think that's saying that Arsenal got to address going forward in Europe. Um I, you know for me every advantage that you can you need because I'll be, I'll be honest then fine margins. I think it was fine margins yesterday that, that cost us. I felt defensively um we played okay, particularly first half, made one mistake in the second and, um, you know, it cost us. And I, the one thing that I, two things that I take from the game, one, one, the one, if, if I, you know, I'm disappointed that we lost for obvious reasons and like, but like when I'm sort of reflecting it on the way home yesterday, you have a little bit of time to think, don't you? And everything like that. What disappointed me more about anything was, you know, the last 10 minutes, we never threw the kitchen sink at me. It was like, it was just the same sort of thing going on there. We didn't really look like we was going to score. So I felt that that was disappointing. Um, listen, I thought we was fantastic. Um, the way we set up defensively against, a, you know, a top team over two games. And um, I, I have to say that... Um, if if I'd be really really honest about it, like you know, it just wasn't quite good enough defensively. Like you know, just just made them one or two mistakes, particularly in the first game that I think uh, cost us. But if I'd be really critical about the tactics of our defending, I think we really set up the shape and everything was fantastic. Like you know, but the one thing I felt that we didn't, have, as good as we were defensively. Blunted us going forward, Dan. If you know what I'm saying, I don't think you know we was quite. It, it, we've got to find a way to defend like that and be solid, but also look dangerous going forward. I never felt that we was ever going to score, particularly in the second half. So listen, that's something that they can work on and and, and tweak on and everything like that. I, I I felt, if I'll be really honest, over the two legs, Dan, that both play both legs. We never really got to it. None of us, none of us, none of the team played at their peak. If you look at the forwards, weren't great. I didn't think the defensive numbers 
weren't uh, weren't weren't at their best. The midfield weren't at their great uh, their best. The, the front three, by the way, I know like Donna's going to come in like here. What's she saying here? Do you agree? Lee, the number twenty nine was shocking. I can't even yeah. say. It. I can say his name. Listen, the old front, the old front forward, poor mum. Mum's not a fan of, no. of her. We know. No, 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 no. They weren't great. They weren't great. No, they weren't. None of them were. No, no. he wasn't. He, he, he didn't. He was anonymous. Um, he's, um, you know, lack of service didn't help. But even when he dropped back into midfield, there was wasn't no contribution from him uh, for the whole night. I didn't even know he was playing. If I'll be honest, but <laughs> you can say that about Saka. You can say that about. All, all the front three, Martinelli. I thought they were all poor. Martinelli's getting a little bit more stick than everybody else. If I do you know what that is, though, Lee? Because I, I, I got to say, in the first half, I didn't think he was a shambles. I, I, I I'm with you. I, I, I didn't think he was that bad. I, I felt he was a little bit more. I think he's saying he's shocking. He's. I know he was at fault for the goal, losing his man away, but in, that was the second half. In first first half, I thought. Actually, he's the only one who's given it a go and trying to make something happen here. I could see him. I know he had a bad shot because for me, he's got to go with his right foot there, not his left foot, right? But for me, he was the one that I looked at and thought, you know what, fair play, at least you're giving it. I thought the others were anonymous. And I just looked at the bench and I thought, he's going to take Martinelli off here again, even though Saka and Mark and Havertz are invisible and having shockers. And the board comes up and I think, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing there? Like for me, that is an opportunity to say to Saka and Iberts, I'm sorry, mate, not in this game. This is the one you'd turn up in. And they didn't. But he's taken Martinelli off again. Why well, is that? That's, 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 that's that. the thing that a lot of people are saying, Dan, you know, like why why is it always Martinelli? And I would be a little bit like that if I was Martinelli, you know what I mean? He should have scored in the first half. Now, listen, let's talk about, you know, the goal, if you want to like, yes, he gets a lot of the blame for it. He gets a lot of the blame for it because he was the last involvement in it like you know what I mean but realistically come on we both should both know the cross should have been stopped on the right hand side then when it went over to the left Ben White should have stopped it as well we didn't do enough um you know I only see the goal when I'm commentating it from the first time from there I, I still think that um Raya could have just punched it away or got got it clear instead of keeping it alive um but you know uh that's my opinion um but in saying that, I don't blame him for the goal. I think that, you know, you, you look at the two, you, we've let them cross the ball twice. And then you have to say that Martinelli does let Kimmich go. He does, you know what I mean? He's not strong enough in there. And, um, yeah, it, it was a poor goal to give away, like, you know. And I just think at the end of the... How I looked at it when I come away from the game, Dan, I know you've got a little bit more of a different perspective than me, is that I just felt that we wasn't quite ready for this yet. They just seemed a little bit more experienced than us, a little bit more know-how than us. And a lot of people turned around and said, well, if we had an elite striker and we had a, a, a 30, 40, 40 goal striker, we would have gone through and all that. Well, Manchester City had that and they still went out. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's sometimes you have to have that little bit of luck. Um, and, but just all around, and I, do you know what? The, fr- the corner at the end, just summed it all up for me. It just summed it all up for me, you know, um, our, how it was for us. We're just not quite ready for that for that competition at this moment in time. And I do, I do think at the end of the day, um, I do think at the end of the day, it was a missed opportunity as well. I think we, because we never really, really played well. Now, at the end of it, I will always say... Um, yeah, we didn't play well. That, but I'm, I'm going to say that Bayern Munich didn't allow us to play well. They played it they're very, very... Ta- they never changed their tactics, Dan, when they was 1-0 down, 2-1 up, 2-2, even, even through the whole game. They kept it very, very structured, very, very calculated, very, very good. So, at the end of it, you just got to... Um, but but I'm gonna, I don't know how you feel about this. You you, 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 you know, you have to say your things now. I'm more, more disappointed after Sunday than I mm-hmm. was last night uh, because I, I always felt that this could happen I didn't see that coming on uh, Sunday and that, that hurt me more than more more than yesterday and that that is be- me being honest yeah um you've said a lot that I agree with I can't disagree with well pretty much everything you've said um I didn't think the front four turned up I thought Erdegaard tried but couldn't get anywhere I thought the midfield were awful Lee I've got to say this I Big up to Goretzka and Lehmann again. 
But didn't they, they do that last them. week? Didn't they do that last week? Did we not learn from that? Did mm. Party not at least come on and try and change things up in there a bit? Is he a decoration now? Is he just not fit? Well, that's what, I'll come back to that in a minute with the subs bench as well. Yes. I honestly believe defensively in the first 45, it was fine. I did feel that. And I left at half time. We, we, I was at my dad's and, and, and my mum and I said, I was all right off. That was as I expected. I, I went for a 1-0 Arsenal, not a 1-0 Bayern. But I expected it to be a tight game. I knew it would be 1-0 either way. I just knew it would be. Yeah, right? yeah. And the midfield, they absolutely schooled us, mate. That Goretzka and Lima in two games, they've been the better two. Declan Rice and Jorginho swallowed up, mate. Invisible. Yeah. Um, that was what I thought. Um, Tommy Asu, he got done by Sane once. But after that, all right game. Saliba, likewise, thought he was probably one of the better players. Um, Gabriel, few iffy moments, but again, few good moments. Ben White, few iffy moments, few good moments. Other than that, mate, the front four were, or front three in particular, were poor. I'm sorry. Havertz, invisible, yeah, doesn't come off. Puts him over on the left at one stage. Uh, Jesus and Trossard come on, pointless subs, didn't change anything at all. Jesus missed, I know he's offside, but what yeah, he's doing there was horrendous. Trossard, all he's got to do is whack it in the box. And he's dilly daddling on it. And then he yeah. has to foul the geezer. Poor. Yeah. Saka, you're absolutely bang on. Nothing at all. No creative chances made. No shots. Nothing on target. And nothing moving forward. And then he gets a corner, which he's now crap at overnight all of a sudden. And he can't beat the first man in the last 20 seconds of the game. If I'm David Raya, I'm slapping him. I've just run all the way up here. And you can't <laughs> even get it across. Absolutely shocking from him. So I don't think that it's all on the individual players. I think some of it's on the in-game management as well. I think some of the team um, selection has been wrong over the last couple over the last week or so. And I also think, although I was happy with the team selection this time, the subs, to be fair, um, are all a little bit all over the place this season. Now I'm going to stick with this for a reason. When I saw Reddy and Ketia come on at 87 minutes, I felt the same way I did at the weekend. We're out. And that's not being horrible to Eddie and Ketia. That, to me, is asking the question, scratching my head, going, Mikel, what's happening here then? What are you doing there? Because he's run around like Edless Chicken a couple of games. He is not winging us a football ga a game against Sheffield United or Everton or Burnley in those circumstances. Not buying Munich away. This guy has done nothing to prove that he deserves a number 14 and 100k a week. But he's put him on it. And now he's flinging him on. Hardly kicks a ball, but he's coming on for a few minutes every game now. What's happening here? Poor, yeah? Yeah. There are six players in this squad that have kicked a ball less times, less minutes than Aaron Ramsdale this season. That's a massive worry. And that proves to me that when he says, believe in us, trust this process, I believe in my squad. Liar. Liar. No, you don't. Reese Nelson, you don't believe in him. You do not trust him. £35 million pounds you spent on Vieira, you don't trust him. You think he's a flop. That's what you're telling the fans at the moment. You think he's a flop. Thomas Party could not come on in that game and try and dominate some of the midfield that we were dying for over 180 minutes. Some of the other players that haven't got minutes uh, involved, Emil Smith-Rowe, played a right against Luton, I thought. Ain't seen him kick a ball since. Ain't seen him. Don't see him come on. Don't see him do anything. So he doesn't believe in the team. He doesn't believe in the squad yet. And I don't feel that the squad is good enough still. And I've said that for a long, long time. So a lot of people think that I'm being, what's the word, going against it and contradicting myself because I'll say, you should have won that game. And on the other hand, you should win the league or you should win the Champions League. And on the other hand, I'm saying the squad's not good enough. But essentially, we're being told that the squad is good enough and that it's a 9 out of 10 window and that we're buzzing for this. We've got Declan Rice. Now we've got Averts. We've got Raya. We've got Tim, but all this stuff. Still ain't good enough, for, quite for me, because the bench didn't change the game at all. So I've got problems with that, Lee, and I've got problems where I see a stat today that says Manchester City and Arsenal's comparisons of players who have started in 40, 4 0 games this season. Man City, none. Why? Because they've got a squad that they trust, that they rotate. Arsenal, seven players have started 40 4 0 games this season. We should not be tired this season. We had 21 days off in Dubai in January. 
But the reason we're knackered is because we don't trust our squad. We're playing 13 players for 40 games. Now, some of those Manchester City players might have started 30, might have started 29, even 28, might have started 32. But we've had seven of our players that have played in started 40 times this season. Saliba and Gabriel. That means we've got no cover for Saliba or Gabriel that he trusts. Yeah, the cover for Gabriel and, and Saliba is now playing at left back. The other one's playing at right back. Right. Funnily enough, the other one who's played 40 is Ben White at right back. The other one is Havertz. I can kind of forgive you there. New signing plays in a few positions, has been utilised in a few positions. Saka, funnily enough, is the other one. Erdegaard, funnily enough, is the other one. So that means there's no backup to those players that he trusts. They might be on the bench, but he doesn't trust them. Keep them on. Just play them for 90. He ain't bringing them on. They're rubbish. That's what this is saying to me in my head now. So I'm thinking, so Saka, there's no cover for him. Erdegaard, there's no cover for him. Well, there is. It's Smith, Rowe and Vieira, but he doesn't really trust them because when they came, when Erdegaard came off against Villa, we conceded two and we looked a complete mess. There was nobody to replace him. So what my point is that the drop off is still too big, Lee. There's still too much of a drop off here. So that to me, again, you look at the summer, but we ain't got the summer. The summer's over there. We're here now. You know, we had to do that last summer. So I think the last two games have proven that the energy's draining a little bit. We're running out of gas a bit. With these players are looking tired and we don't quite know why, but that's just proved why they do, because they've played a lot of football. And I think it's time to mix it up a bit now. You know, when you come off the back of a couple of defeats like this, it does hurt your heart. Confidence is low. Don't go play the kids against Wolves. But at the same time, I think players like Bukayo Saka might need a bit of a rest. And we'll talk about that uh, towards Wolves in, in the last section. But mm. that was the way I saw it, Lee. I, I didn't see it as, you know, you said that Bayern Munich just had the edge on us. I agree with that in the second half they did, but I think it was up there that, that they were good with, not so much what they did on the pitch. I didn't look at them and go, oh, they're blitzing us here. We can't we can't keep them away from our goal. They're preparing it. They're better than it. They're blowing. I didn't get that. I got, they're going to win this up here. And they did. 1-0, they're through. Do you know what? It's made some good points there. Some of, some of I definitely do agree with it. Like, you know, let's just, that game uh, yesterday, I never actually, do you know like when uh, against Aston Villa, Right, I, I was saying to Mikel, change it because you could see it was going to happen. You could see it happening. You know what I mean? I, I, I you know, I could see it draining, and I, I felt oh, if we don't sort, if we don't do something, we're going to lose this one nil. You know, I didn't see that yesterday. I felt that we were still in, we were still comfortable, we were still controlling the game, uh, not controlling the game, but it was, it was a very, very like game of chess, if you know. what I mean. I didn't think it was that, that way. As soon as they scored, then that was it. Game over. Mm. Game over. We never looked like scoring after that. I, I agree with you. I felt yesterday, if I'd be really honest about it, um, the substitutions were far too late. Uh, didn't have a, have a time to impact. If you look back at the, the game at the Emirates, he made the changes a little bit earlier. And you're bringing Eddie on with four minutes to go, three minutes to go, Dan. What the hell is he going to do in that? The only thing that he's going to get is bring stick, bring people to comment about it. That just doesn't doesn't really see why that was happening like you know the, the thing about what i i do um i do say about um um the defenders the central defenders and i'll be I'm, I'm quite happy that they're playing constantly um all the time because that um shows they're getting a partnership going and everything like that and and uh, you know why would you want to rest them to if, if I'll be honest, but in other areas, I do think that that is there. You know, I, I think someone put in the comments, you know, he had a man of match performance against Luke and Smith Rowe. Oh, he's, he's in my plans. Well, he's not at kicked the ball since until he come on um, at the weekend. Maybe that was his plan. Arrest him. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't see they come on when, you know, when we're chasing the game. Uh, uh, do you know what? I'm going to be really honest. If, 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 if you want my honest opinion, I think he thought, oh, well, I've lost this game now. I'm going to bring on. I'm going to get Odegaard off to for for, mm. for Wednesday and, and and run run Smith Road for a little while, like you know. I I, I look. I, I I've said it and I'll say it again. I, I um. I think Jesus is nowhere near at the level he was last season. Nowhere near the level he was since the injury. That's that's hampered us. Um, I, I'm going to be that people are saying about our oh, layoff of uh, of Raya and everything like that. My my mate Mark. Um, made a good point today and he turned around and said, Raya has improved us 
in possession of the ball. You know, and he has. When the ball goes back and around, we look so much comfortable um, and it, it sets us up very, very nicely. And, and it does. But where we lose it on the, the Ramsdale situation is he's never going to pull off one the one the saves like Ramsdale did, like you know, and, and you go, wow, what, that was a, 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 a save of unbelievable. I think Ramsdale's probably a better shot stopper. Um and listen, at the end of the day, um when people say, Oh, I'll stop getting on uh, if you look at what, what what team I wanted to play on um on Wednesday night, Ray is in it, you know, I have to say I I've I've gone down that route. Um and he has convinced me that he's probably the better uh, of the two in the system and the way that Mikel wants to play. That doesn't mean to say he's a better goalkeeper or he's better and whatever. Like you know, I see the best goalkeeper uh, um, that Arsenal have had in in, in Mikel's um, era. I see him about six o'clock tonight. Facts. You know, I don't care what anybody says. You know what I mean? That, uh, he's been the best goalkeeper that we've had at the club for the last five, six, seven years, and probably for a while, you know, and again, wasn't, uh, you know, um, sold for footballing reasons, let's be honest. It was for for, for financial things and, and things like that. He wasn't promised a first-team start, and uh, for me, for the life of me, I don't understand why. So, listen, the goalkeeping situation, I still think, is is on... Go- yeah, if, if I'll be really honest, if, if we're going to sell Ramsdale... I want to see a, 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 an elite goalkeeper coming in. I will say this: there ain't that many about, but I do think that at the end of the game, at the end of it, if you go, what were the differences and everything like that? I do think like Neuer's performances were, uh, a, you know, when it mattered against um, Ben White. I'm not, I'm not saying that he, he's hit it straight at him, but it didn't go through him. You know, what I mean, made that save, made a made a couple of saves yesterday, as did Raya. But I just felt that, you know, Neuer just showed that he is what he is. And top, top Do you think, forward. though, that Ben White and Saka will look at those moments and think, what if? Because not what if, I wish it would have happened. I think it could have. Ben White needs to bury that chance and Saka needs to put that in the goal. I know people say it's a penalty, but I've looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and I'm thinking, he can still shoot there. I'm sorry, he can still shoot there. And I just wonder if that will play in their mind and think, why didn't I do that? Do you know what I mean, why didn't I keep my head? Why didn't I keep composure? Maybe it's a learning curve. Maybe they're too young. Yeah, but, I, I you know, agree that. Right. Like, you know, I, I do feel if that that was happening last night, it would have been given. Look, I'm going to be really honest with the referees. I ain't got a problem with what uh, the referee over the over the, the game yesterday, but and I don't blame him. Like, but when you have a shot, a goalkeeper saves it. They're putting it up on the screens as well after the game. What a great save it is! Like. And that you're not getting the corner. Now, come on, this is elite level. You know the linesman should be giving that, not not the referee. You, you know they cannot get that wrong. Um, and I, I'll tell you another thing with VAR when when they, um, I think it was Harry Kane at the head. I can't. I don't know if it who, who, who had the header and we save it. And it goes for a corner. It's offside, but they still have the corner. So they get the corner. The first score from, from the corner, it gets given. It's ridiculous. It's, it's offside, but. Um, look, I'm just just making up things there, really. If I be honest, I just think that at the end of it, uh, as you turn around, that their midfield players, I think their two midfield players in midfield were at the top of their game. Dan, at the yeah. top of their yeah. game. I I I, I didn't think Declan Rice. Declan Rice um, looks a little bit jaded, if I be honest. It's not um, in his play, but his recovery runs. He, he was bursting past players and things like that. He's not quite doing that at this moment in time. And I. You know, you might think I'm stupid when I say that. I thank uh, I thank Gareth Southgate for that. You know, there was an opportunity. No, I, don't for him to have... I don't think you're stupid for that at all. He, he had an opportunity to have a rest in a meaningful friendly, and he played him in both games. For for for, for ridiculous, for in, in my point of view, like you know, um, and um, I, I think that uh, you, you know, there, there you go from that. I think also like Jorginho, such a good player for us, but he hasn't got the 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 um, running power uh, that we need, then you know what I mean. Someone that's got all that uh, can't get around the pl- pitch as well because he's a little bit older now. But we need someone young that can do what he does and also get around the pitch. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I think. Yeah, there. I we we got a little bit done from that, but some of the play, some of the play that he done yesterday was very very good. But 
I'm going, you know, I'll say it, the, as you said, the three, the, the three were, no, I'm not having a go at Saka, like, you know, Saka, uh, I think, is also a player that's on on, on his last legs as far as, the, you know, I, 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 I think, you know, people are going, um, oh, we should, but my, my son found out today and said, oh, uh, Cole Palmer now is probably going to push Saka out of the team and everything like that. I think he could do because I think at the end of the day, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't bother me, by the way, if Saka was rested for the summer. I, I really wouldn't bother me, like, you know. I do, I do blame the manager for that, though, because he has played him. He's played him he, too much, you know what I mean? Played like, he has much. played him and too much. And not just this season, by the way. This, not just this season. You know, he has played him too much. And, you know, I, I want to talk Saka and Martinelli because they've not had the best of seasons. No, they haven't. The numbers are still there for Saka. They're not so much for Martinelli. What do you put that down to, Lee? Like, real talk. Because they're two quality players. They're only 22. They're not old. What is it? Like, is it a system? Is it they've just dipped in form? Is it they're knackered? Like, what, what do you put it down to? Oh, well, listen, I, I, I don't think they're the finished articles yet. You know, by a long chalk, you know, there's just, there's a massive ceiling on Martinelli. Martinelli got himself injured. But before he got injured, he was doing really, really well. I just think at the end of it, you're coming up in this Champions League against players that they've not come up against, Dan. Yeah. You know, they've come up against Europa League. They've come up against um, Manchester City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea defenders and whatever, once every three or four weeks. The rest of the time, they're you know, not coming up there. And then you, in a, in a week, so you, you know, you come up against the Brazilian international when you're playing Porto and you come up against... Uh, a Canadian international who's very, very good, you know, uh, this time around. And and it's just, I, I do think, you know, like, as Red Smoke says, there, a little bit of lack of experience. And they've got to, they've got to learn and know how from it. As you get that, like, you know, is you play play against these teams and you learn and you make yourself better. I think Saka, to be honest, has, has done that. I think Martinelli hasn't yet. And I think that he's got to do it. But you know what? Uh, uh, well, you kept getting dragged off every single time. Every time the, the subs ball comes up, right? Mm. And I'm, you might you might think I'm silly when I say this, but you lose confidence on it. Like, I play like vegetable. I know I'm older than everybody else and everything. Like, do you know what I mean, right? But when the when the ball comes up, like I'm going to make a substitution, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know I know it's, it's going to be me. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, do you know do you know what I'm saying? Like, well, when I played when I was in my prime and all that. Like, substitution. I, I, know, I knew it was never going to be me, right? So, you know, as a player, and, and I, I'm only relating to, I know it's probably, people are laughing at me when I say it like, but but when I'm playing in that game, like, I know I've only got a certain amount of time to impress or play well because I know I'm coming off. Do you know Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and maybe Martinelli's in that sort of uh Rich, uh, thing of it all. Now, also, when you if you're playing sixty minutes, sixty minutes, sixty minutes, sixty five, sixty five minutes, what physically, right? When when you go into the seventies and eighties, you're not your body's not used to it, Dan. So you know, I don't think it's doing him any favors. And if I'm Martinelli, I'm I'm, I'm sitting on that plane or back in the hotel on the phone to my mum or dad or or, or, or my girlfriend going. Um, yeah, I didn't play well today. I had a I had a poor game. I, I, yeah, I did that. But so did Bukayo, and he's still on. But it's why is it always me all the time? Why is it always me? You know. So I, I do. You know. You, you do go up. These are these are humans and all that. And you do go up. Do you think sometimes he could improve on that Arteta because his team management at times, sorry, his man management at times, I think has been poor. Like, I'll give you another example. Chris Hudson rung me up. Big up to Chris earlier. And uh, he said, the left-back, Kivior, we've been solid, solid. He says he has 45 minutes where he gets skinned. We haven't seen him again. You know what I mean? Like, some of this stuff, and that would affect him confidence-wise now. He's like, so is that all yeah, you wanted? It... I'll, give you three, I'll give you three months of me being solid and 45 minutes against a world-class elite winger who's got pace, and that's me done now, is it? You've got Zinchenko ahead of me and Tommy Asso ahead of me. Not that I'm, I didn't want, I didn't actually want Kivio to start. I did want Tommy, Tommy Asso. That's not my point. But Kivio, how, how does he feel, Lee? Is he sitting there like Martinelli thinking, he don't want me this manager now? Well, you know, I, think, I think in in, in, in Mikel's defence on that one, he's, he's, uh, he's filling in. 
and 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 I know it sounds silly at times. When the higher you go up, there, there's certain roles that you do. You know that you're only going to fill in until the the player comes back in. Just do you know see what I'm saying? It's it's a funny situation you, you, that, that that happens. It's even like with a goalkeeper, like you know, um, Liverpool goalkeeper has been doing fantastically well. As soon as Allison's fit, he's back in. You know, it doesn't matter how well you do. I think there is a little bit of light uh, of like that. But I I, I think Kivia could quite easily start on. Um, at the weekend and go back into that role. But I think that, you know, he did get found out against Sarnia. Blimey. Uh, Tommy Asher had to be really on his game to even keep keep with him, Dan. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. think I would have done that if I'd be really, really honest. No, I didn't want him to start. It's not that. No, it's I don't know. Well, the know. team that he picked is the team that I said. You know what I mean? Well, so, both of us were spot on, mate. We yeah, both wanted so that, I, 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 I think from that point of view, I, I get what Chris is saying. I get what it is. Uh, you know, you 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 can look at it on there, and uh, you know, listen. If I'm if S, if Martinelli is my son, I would turn around and like and say to him like, why why is it always me, Dad, coming off? Why 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 is um it it, it not because I would turn around and say to him, I go look, you know, um, you've got Trossard that can play there, you've got. Jesus that can play there. There's a lot more competition on your side than there is on the other side. And I think that's something to do with it. And that's got to be addressed, Dan. Because it's, you know, if it's not Trossard playing in it, it's, it's Jesus. And Jesus done very, very well against Manchester City, if you really remember. And mm-hmm. uh, and and also, I'm going to say this now, like, you know, two things. Um, and we've had a little bit of a dig at Mikel here, and, 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 and rightly so, you know, with the Martinez thing and, and, and whatever. But I haven't seen the game yet. For, I've got it on video. I'm going to watch it after this um, uh, of the Man City at Real Madrid game. Uh, but I've, I've heard that he took off um, Haaland and he took off he um, De Bruyne. And also he let um, Cole Palmer go. Right, okay, and brought in Dakar, and uh, you know, you know, so even this great manager makes mistakes and does things that, that you know that are a little bit balmy. He gets away of it because it's Pep, and he's got lots of trophies and all yeah. that. And I get that. So I mean, that manager's going to make mistakes, and and they are going to get things wrong at times, and 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 you're going to query it. Well, what the hell's he done? Why has he done that? Um, um, but with the Martinelli Saka thing, I, I I don't know. I'd love I'd love to 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 ask him. In a press conference, you know, and you know, I, I don't I know. You're right. I think you're right. I think you're right there. I think what you would say to Martinelli is actually the truth. There's competition on the left. Trossard and Jesus can play there, and Reese Nelson's the only one that can play on the right. And when he actually has come on, Reese Nelson, which not many people comment on, he comes on the left. So the last few times Reese Nelson has yeah. come on, he's come on on the left. I think he started on the right against Brentford in the Carabao Cup, and he might have started a Premier League game as well. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. but the majority of the time he's come on from the left. And when he scored them wonder goals against us, I think it was Forrest and Bournemouth, obviously, in the last kick last season, um, that was from the left. He wasn't on the right then. So, you know, it's another one who's come on on the left, Smith Rowe, another one who's played more on the left than the right. So Saka is literally the only one we've got. And the only player I would say, and this is the player I would start on Saturday, is Jesus on the right. That's what I would do to him on Saturday. I play Jesus as a winger now. I don't think he's a number nine. And I think, you know, LB was saying to me earlier on, on the, my stream and his stream, we did like a, a dual stream and he said, Jesus was always better on the wide for us. That's why we got rid of him because he can't play number nine. And um, he said, he'll be a good winger for Arsenal. If you play him with a right winger, he'd be good. And him and Saka can interject. And maybe the idea in the summer, get a striker, Jesus goes out wide if we keep him. So listen, it, it is it is going to be a, a definite, um, a definite, interesting convo. I wanted to mention uh, this lastly, Lee, before we take, because we've got a lot of questions, a lot of super chats that I want to get through before we close. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to mention this because a lot of people are talking about Mikel Artel. Right. Um, this is all competitions under Mikel Artel. Um, these are the games that he's played in his tenure at Arsenal. Look at the state of April. Seven wins in 22 games, six draws and nine losses. Um, it's poor, you know. Obviously, it's in order of win ratio there. So in September, May, normally when the pressure's off in the last few years, we, we've won. Yeah. Uh, March, when we get a build-up to it, when we're catching up, it's good. October and November, we're kind of just starting and we've, we were flying last year and this year. Um, July's obviously pre-season. Um, 
and then in in June, obviously, don't have many games. But this April, that to me says there's a mentality problem, mate. Something's not right there. Something the pressure gets on, and we go, oh, we've dropped it again. Um, and that's got to change if Arsenal want to win trophies, hasn't it, Lee? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that you know, like it's it's not rocket science, Dan. Right? April is where the pressure's on, like you know, whether you, whether you're challenging for the title, you're challenging for top four or relegation. It's as simple as that. That's when it matters. Um, and the problem that I see with Mikel, and this is where I think you've really got to go. I'm not going to judge him or do anything at this moment. I'm going to not say nothing about it until what I see on the next two games. No excuses for this football club, Mikel Arte and anybody after this, this game. On I expect six points come um, Tuesday night. The next time that uh, Manchester City run out on a football field in the Premier League, I expect Arsenal to be four points in front of them. That means winning at Wolves and then winning at um, Chelsea. And if you look at it, that is exactly what he's got to do. Now, for me, if he doesn't do that and we capitulate and have another, another bad month, you're going to turn around and say, well, we're, you know, people turn around and go, oh, we're progressing. Are we progressing? I'm not so sure, like, because um, I look at it and I go, well, we was in command in the top four two years ago and we failed. We was in command last season and we failed. If we we was two points clear going into this game here, we failed. There's a, there's a pattern starting to develop. Now, I, I, I think that uh, come um, Saturday, Dan. I'm not guaranteed. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you that now. If you, I, I'm, I'm not saying that Arsenal are going to win this game Saturday. No, they could easily, could, could easily slip up on this game, but they're going to have to. And he's going to have to get us over the line in the next few games. Now, if he, if for instance Arsenal in the next four, in the next six games, lose to Wolves, lose to Tottenham. Sorry, lose to Wolves, draw with Chelsea, lose to Tottenham. Win the next one, whoever that's against Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Uh, Bournemouth, then lose to Man United. The questions have surely got to be asked. Surely will have to be asked. This is where managing the football club of the um, size of Arsenal, where pressure is expected. This is where we've got to have pressure. So you've got to do it. So for me, it's important that now, you know, you have that little bit of a blip that you've had and you know, like, listen, at the end of the day, we've lost two games and one we shouldn't have done at um, uh, Aston Villa. But when you look back at the game, and if you'd be really, really honest about the Villa game, um, they they got better and better as the game went on. So it, it, the, 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 the end of it, um, let's see what he does in these next six games. Now, um, and, and he should, if he's got anything about him, Arteta, Right, he goes to, to Wolves and they win that game. And he goes to, to Ch Chelsea and he wins that game. And then that's putting pressure on Manchester City. For, for, for instance, if Manchester City then were to lose or draw against Brighton, just say that they do, you've then got four games to, to win the league. And then you've got the pressure back on again. Can he do it? So I, I think at the end of it, um, there will be amounts of pressure on him. But let's, let's, let's be really honest about it. I, I, someone put on there today, no one done better than Mikel Arteta. That, that sounds rhymes, doesn't it? No one done better than Mikel Arteta in the Champions League this season from uh, an English club. First time he's ever been in it, he got to the quarterfinals. Pep's gone out in the quarterfinals. The other two didn't even make the group stages. So, but... There, there has got to be some sort of accountability somewhere along the line, Dan. You cannot just go and say, like, oh, yeah, we've improved. Well, hold on a minute. I've just read out a stat where you, two years ago, you failed to get to top four. Last season, you failed to, 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 to see it home. This season, you failed to see it home. When are you going to see it home? So there is going to be pressure on him. And I, I, I I'm not... And in this camp at this moment in time of saying sack him, sack him, sack him. But what I am saying is that I, if we crumble, which could easily happen, Dan, 
if we capitulate, yeah. Right, this could easily happen. There's got to be consequences and answers. And why is it continually happen, happening? And it can't can't happen. It, this cannot uh, happen. It can't happen. Arsenal have to go to Wolves and, and, and go. Because at the end of it, what will happen, Dan? And you made a great point when we were talking earlier on, and he's it, right. He won't get sacked this season. But no. No. The, there's there's a lot of fans out there that are, are happy with what he's doing, and I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Where I wanted him to be sacked three or four years ago when we were shabby. But when I look at it now, I think he's doing a very, very good job. But if we are to capitulate again, right, I'm going to have questions. I'm not one of these... Uh, cult figures that you know. I mean, when um, uh, when Mikel comes on the telly, I'm pulling down my trousers and, and and having a day after, right? I'm not one of them, like yeah, okay, I'm not. But what I am is one that want what want what's best for Arsenal Football Club, right? Mm. At the moment, the last time I went to Bayern Munich, we didn't compete. The last two years we've competed in the in the three four year ago. If you'd have said at, at the beginning of the season Arsenal going to win, going to challenge for the league, you'd have been laughed at. Then you're not saying that now. So there has been some sort of progress. But what you you and I know this is where you are. Is it's yes, it's great getting us there, but can you take us that bit further? Now that is not critical. Uh, that's where I am. That's yeah. where I am. And it, that's it's not a criticism of the manager. Yeah. You're saying that you know he's done fantastically well to get us here. Yes, but can he get me over the line? Uh, and and I, I don't think that people should be not allowed to question that. I totally and agree. If, and if he capitulates, it, there's going to be more than just a handful that are going to say that. I don't think it's a crime to question if this guy can get us across the line. Now, if you believe he's going to, brilliant. But I'd love people to explain what evidence they have that he's going to. Because it is hopefully, it ain't belief. It's not like I've seen enough. This guy, mentally, when it matters, he gets us across the line. The only time he's done that is when we won the FA Cup with a different side that was called Toxic that he got rid of. So since he spent this £600 million that people keep quoting, we haven't managed to get across the line. So in four years, it's been failure because you can't call it successful when you're not doing that, right? You might see progress. That's sure. That's the word to use. But it hasn't been a successful four years, has it? Because we haven't watched anything to show for it whatsoever. So until he can get us across that line, I'll always have the question marks of, do I think he can? Now, I don't think Liverpool fans were really too pissed off to question whether Brendan Rodgers could get him across the line. That was a manager who did a very good job with him in 13-14 that really should have won the league if it wasn't for Gerard slipping, right? But they got Klopp, and Klopp won it. Ranieri, very good manager, went on to win the league with Leicester. He was at Chelsea, but they didn't win anything until Mourinho came in, right? Mark Hughes was at Man City, if you remember, and it's like, oh, why can't he win the league? He's got all this money here, because he weren't ready. They needed Mancini to come and win them the league. Are we in that position? Question mark. Not saying that we are. We are. Question mark. Are we? We might be. I'd love to think that next season we'll go and win a treble, we'll go and win a double, we'll go in the league, we'll go in the Champions League. Of course I do, right? But I have my doubts about and questions about it. And that's all I'm saying. And people will get on you, oh my God, what is going on here? This guy wants it. Listen, calm down, people. There are other managers here. This is not Arsene Wenger FC, Unai Emery FC, George Graham FC, Herbert Chapman FC, or Mikel Arteta FC. It's Arsenal FC. You get a lot of different managers. You can't fall in love with them because sometimes in this day and age, majority of the time they get sacked, right? And you move on. And what happens when Carlo Ancelotti comes in and we don't win anything for three years? Well, guess what? He gets sacked and we get someone else in. This isn't about loving a manager and having an obsession with him and trying to, oh, look at his hair and look at his best looking bloke, you know, all that crap. I want this guy to win, not look good on the sideline, you know? So for me, that's where I'm at. Um, let's take some of these questions. We're going to do oh, just before we go in there, Sean Lee said, on, like, Lee, do you know Spurs fan Sticky? Yes, I do know Sticky. Like, you know, good lad. Oh, well, there, there we go. go. Uh, yeah. Daniel is the first super chatter of the night. It says, why are you surprised by this result? History says this is who Arsenal are. All big away games we haven't delivered. It's not an anonymy. It's the rule. I'll take this one, actually, because you're right. right. The, the away games this season have been a bit of a disappointment. And I think most of the away games that we've lost has been when there's a little bit of pressure, honestly. Yeah. Um, 
the Aston Villa game was one of them. I remember at Christmas time I was on holiday and I remember watching it thinking, God, they're doing well, Villa, at the moment. There were even, people were even saying, could they be title contenders back then? I remember. Um, played all right in the game, but weren't quite able to get across the line. They won 1-0. Newcastle away. It was your birthday weekend. I remember meeting you up there in Newcastle. They were depleted, Newcastle. They had no ESAC, luckily, that day. They had no, there's about four or five players that had out. We lost 1-0. I know it was a VAR, robbed us, all that crap, but we still lost the game, didn't deserve to win it. Um, Bayern Munich away from home, Bayern Munich at home, uh, Tottenham at home, Stamford Bridge at home, even oh, Anfield near, sorry, Stamford Bridge um, away, even Anfield and the Etihad. Let's not sit there and say that we should have walked out there with three points because we blitzed them. But let's just say that we could have gone there and when it mattered, try and deliver and we didn't manage to deliver enough to get three points. But other than those two, which I'll give him credit for getting a point away from, most of the other away games, Fulham, another one, West Ham at home, you can't win the league if you want to go to Fulham home and away and not pick, not pick up a win. West Ham, we weren't able to win at home. Villa away from home and at home, we've lost both games. That, to me, doesn't show a team that deserves to win the league, I'm afraid. Not yet, anyway. Maybe in a couple of years when we stop that. But that's where I'm at with it. So I think this, Daniel's right here to, to be question some of the big away games where we haven't delivered. And last night was another example of that, Lee. 100, 100, 100% on that, like, you know. But like, you, Champions League is a different thing, Dan. 14, you know what I mean, like years since we've been in a quarterfinal at that stage. It's, you know, we've been out of it for seven years. It's a different competition. I get I, I get about the league. We should, we should be, you know, when you go to... I like, like, we was at Newcastle that day. We didn't deserve to get it. Didn't deserve to win that game. We didn't play well enough to win that game. We didn't deserve to lose it. Aston Villa, we should have won it. You know, Odegaard missed an open goal that day. Like, you know, I mean, sometimes it's not just the manager; it's the players as well. They've got to hold a bit of a, 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 a on it at times. You know what I mean? Even when you go back to the the last couple of games. Should have, should have, you know, Martinelli scored. Yes, he should have, like, you know. We should have scored two, at least two, on on Sunday, like, you know. It's not just that. It's it's the, it's the collective. You've, you've got to get or go away from home. And that's why I felt that this, this this game was massive, not just for the Champions League, but just for us as a, for mentality-wise. We've got to go somewhere and get a result. Now, you can go to Wolves and it's a tough tough game. But it's not one of those ones where you go, oh, that's, 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 you know, might be when you go to Spurs and Man United, you know, but Arsenal have got, you know, if Arsenal are going to win the league, then they've got to go to Spurs and got to go to Man United and they've got to go to Wolves and win all three of them, right? Mm. And basically, they've got to win all six games. Have you got the mentality to do that, like, you know? You know, uh, and, 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 and listen, you know, Sean makes a great point there. If Ben White scores that goal at 2 0, I think this tie is completely different. Oh. Mate, 100%. Because you don't stay at 2 0 either at the Emirates for me. I think we could go on and get a third then. Do you know exactly. what I mean? I wouldn't do. So, you know, it's fine lines, but you've somewhere along the line, I do agree with it, we've got to get over the line on a big game. Got to. Yeah, 100%, man. Um, this next one comes in from Cliff. Big up, Cliff. Regular super chat, regular listener. Big up, mate. It says, uh, FFS, we've been hearing all this. We ain't quite ready. Hand holding for four years now. The bottom line is when the pressure's on, the gaffer crumbles. And I think it's not just the gaffer. I think it's the team as well. I think it's a collect there. I think, you know, to blame it all on Arteta crumbling, I think is a little bit harsh because the team have to take blame for it as well. But essentially, he's built this team. So that's why people look at him first. And I think that's fair. You know, a lot of people say it's unfair to look at just him. But his, his, him and the team. The reason it comes back to him and I think falls on him more is because these are his players. You know, like Fabio Vieira, for example, is somebody who he spent £35 million on and he hasn't got trust now to use him. That kind of thing gets frustrating when £35 million was spent on Madison, £35 million on Palmer, £35 million on Kulis. We spent it on Fabio Vieira. Poor, you know, flop. So I get Cliff's uh, frustration there. Yeah, and, and um, I do get that, Cliff, but at this moment in time, we ain't crumbled yet. Yeah, and this is, this, is the, this is the thing, man. We've we've still got a lot to play for. Uh, still got a lot to moment. play for, yeah. You know, look, listen, if we lose to Wolves uh, uh, at the weekend, then we'll have these conversations. Hundred percent, we'll have these conversations. But no, you're right, Lee. You're right. We got to, we got to, we can't go there yet. there yet. Absolutely, we're not, we're not at that stage yet. No, uh, Devin says, "Our oh, AFC in infancy of being a big club again, Lee." They've always been a big club. They've just been 
not competing and, and, and things like that. You can't say that we're not competing at the moment. Um, we, are, we are, yeah, we are. We are, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and, 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 and as I say, you know, Liverpool have gone uh, uh, have gone out in the uh, Europa League this this week. Um, you know, three 0 at home. Have they bottled it? I don't. I don't hear anybody saying that they bottled it. I haven't actually heard anybody say that Manchester City bottled it yesterday, which was more <laughs> of a bottle than us because at the end of the day, they was at home expected to win with all the superstars and all the money and all that. Like, did they not bottle it yesterday, or or is it down to? a great Real Madrid team. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen the game. But to me, you know what I mean? I, I had Man City in, in the next round, you know? So um, did I. Barcelona I had in the next round. Did they bottle it? So did I. I. So, I uh, currently had, did not have Dortmund in the next round either. Because Atletico Madrid and Simeone, a manager I rate, three years now without a trophy, probably deserves to be sacked. Yeah. Listen, I can't emphasise enough if we'd have won on Saturday, a Sunday, right, we wouldn't be talking about bottling jobs and, and crumbling and all that. We would have actually been saying, do you know what? We've had a great run in the, in the Champions League. We've got a couple of weeks off now. You know, so we can rest players. Let's really concentrate. That Aston Villa game is why we're talking about this. We're not talking about it in the Barcelona games. Uh, sorry, the Bayern Munich games. The Bayern Munich game, we've, we've give it a gallant go and it ain't been quite good enough. The one that's why everybody's talking like they are at this moment is because of Sunday. I guarantee if we are the one on Sunday, no one would be saying, it's a great oh, point. we bottled this, we crumbled it and all that. It's because we... we, we Come one after the other again. Yeah, that's what it is. exactly that. And that's it. Maybe, again, we're uh, inexperienced of not having to deal with that game in between the champion, champions. I don't know, Dan. I don't know. Yeah, listen, it's a great point. This one comes in from Hugo Guna. Big up yourself, bruv, says Dan Lee. Would you take back Emmy Martinez? Elite goals and winner. Big up to both of you. Um, I, I liked Emmy Martinez. Didn't want to get rid of him anyway. In fact, I remember a conversation that Lee and I had on the phone the time that we were getting rid of him and both of us were livid. I can't lie. I thought we were so, so good with him in goal that year. And at the time, let's re it wasn't just the FA Cup we were buzzing about. It was the fact that we had him in goal and we were brilliant with him. And I thought it was one of the worst pieces of business that we've done on, in his reign. I really do. £17 million for a World Cup winning goalkeeper now that Villa have got. They've gone on to potentially win a European trophy with him and to get him into the Champions League with him, potentially, to beat us twice with him. Um, and also, I've got to say, we kept Leno ahead of him. And I actually like Leno. I did like Leno. But he weren't better than Neil Martinez. And we got that wrong. Big, big time, Lee. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say this now. Um, I'll never boo him. All his antics that he'd done the other uh, on, on Sunday, I'd, I never boo him. Yeah, the guy, this guy stayed here 10 years trying to fight for his place. Finally won it and then was told that he weren't good, he weren't going to be signed and all that. Wouldn't you be bitter? Wouldn't you say things against the Arsenal or, or the club that he was at? Of course you bloody would. Like, you know I mean? And uh, so I, I don't blame him on that. Like, you know, listen, what's the word I'm looking for? That, that ship sailed. Ship sailed. He ain't coming back to Arsenal. Oh, yeah. Arsenal won't go in. The, the, the relationship's over. Um, but for me, um, uh, he's better than any, he's better. He's better. You know, like I think with 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 Ramsdale, I think he's better on on the ground than Ramsdale. And um, their shot stopping is probably probably the same. Um, He's on the par with um, Raya on 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 his uh, feet, and he's probably a better shot stopper. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he's better than both of them in a nutshell. Um, Red Smoke, I agree with you on this one as well. Hi lads, we need a clear out in the summer. Smith, Rose, Inchenko, Nelson, and Vieira. He's saying uh, we need a stronger bench as well and more match winners. That for me is key, actually. Match winners, super subs on the bench. We got Trossard, who's done well. But he's the only one, really, you can rely upon to actually go, do you know what? I feel like we're going to score something now. I think we might need something more than that. And maybe some of the starters in this team might find themselves on the bench next season as as, as match that's winners. That's, that, news. that's the way it is. 100% probably. Shinchenko can not get sold, by the way. Why does Shinchenko get signed, uh, sold? I think that he can do a job as a backup left back, you know what I mean, like on, on times. Oh, yeah, he won't go. He won't go. No, I don't really like him. You know, I don't. But I, I know, yeah, but like, listen... Yeah. 
against he Bayern Munich with 2 1 down, it comes on, we get a 2 2 draw out of it. He's got a role to play at this football club. Yeah. Not necessarily like, oh, if, he can't have everybody starting, Dan. There's certain players mm. who ever, you know what I mean? He can come in and do 20 games for us and do well for us. Like, for instance, you're playing Luton, you're playing. Um, you know, teams in the middle of the table when you need that extra man. Bournemouth, Bournemouth at home, that sort of game. Home. Those games, you can play them and all that. But when it comes to those big games, no. No. That's, what about that's the other three, Lee? What about the other three here on the list here? Smith, Rowe, Nelson, Vieira. What do you think? Well, yeah. I, 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 I've got to say that because at the times, you know, the last couple of games, Shinchenko's being used. I haven't seen these guys being used. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I haven't seen Vieira for, for a very, very long while. I don't know what, you know, has he improved? I don't know. I don't see him. So, you know, yeah. like for me, Kivya, Kivya, I wouldn't sell him. He stays, you know what I mean? Contributes. Uh, Tommy Asu might not start every week, but, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen with uh, Timber. But I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I'd keep all, all of those players. If I go into the midfield, I'd keep Jorginho. I don't mean to say he's going to start week in, week out. But, um, you know, uh, Thomas Party, if you're going to get big money for him and get in another top, top midfielder, yes, just go and do that, like, you know. Up front, I, I, I'm not selling Jesus. I'm not selling uh, any of the strikers other than Eddie. That was one of the questions here was, you know, in your opinion, does Jesus warrant and deserve to be in the club next season? And I agree. I think he does. I don't think, he should be a starter. I don't think he should be our number nine, but I think he should be in the squad 100%. 100%. And I don't want to see him going into the, the Cup of America this time around. Like, you know, I want him, I want him, um, and that knee 100%. Listen, if he, this time last, you know, when we, before the World Cup, Jesus was, was magnificent. No one was saying about getting rid of him. We were saying how no. great he was. He's just struggling. Well, that's my opinion. He's not, he's not 100% fit with his knee. And that, and that was always a worry for me. Always a worry for me, but can still do a job. Yeah, fair play, man. Um, Daniel Parker says, Big up the legends, Dan and Lee. Big up to you, mate. It says, Thank you for both of the great, thank you both for all the great content. Um, the question he has is, What do we make of these strong rumors about Arsenal wanting the lease? Say, too injury prone for me. Yeah, today, if people don't know, we've been linked heavily with mm. Alexander Isak and um, Michael well, Lee. Now, um, I will say, and I don't mean to be pessimistic or dampen it too much, if we would have won last night, that that we would not be linked with these two players. <laughs> Let's yeah, just have it right. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it's great to be linked with two players that I would have 100% have and would walk into our team. I mean, Isak would walk into it. Elise, at the moment, would walk into it. Why? Because Saka clearly needs a rest. And for me, this is the sort of signing we need to make. Now, I understand yeah. Pedro Neto and Elise have got injury problems. I get that. Right. But they're young enough for me to actually say that they've still got a career ahead of them. If they were like 30 and picking up knocks every week, I'd probably yeah, go with them. Not, not for me. But they're 20, I think they're 23 and 20, 22, is it? 21 or something like that. I don't know. I'm guessing their ages. But And Isak as well. Um, you know, Isak, Pedro Neto and Elise, they're all young. That's what I'm getting at. So yeah. I think they would all be good signings. Um, so watch this space, man. Um, I think that, that something, that, you know, if we're linked with those sort of players, Lee, that could be a potentially good... Uh, Good, That's um, we're going to be linked with some big forward. players because we've got big money. We're going to sell a lot of players, and we've also got uh, the Champions League and whatever go, what, what all goes with that. Arsenal will be in the market for some big, big players, and yeah. that that is that is a fact. Yeah, Ash, big up yourself, brother. Says, do you think we need a striker to bang in the goals? I think there's too much pressure on Saka to score. I'm so disappointed in Jesus four goals all season. Yeah, it's been poor. Um, listen, we do need a centre forward, Lee. I think it's quite clear. A lot of people did sort of question mark it when we were banging in goals, sixes, fives, fours against Sheffield United, Burnley's and West Ham's. But I think it's come around full circle again to prove that it ain't goals by committee that's needed. We do need also the option up top. And I do think we're going to get one, Lee. Yes, it's it's not Arsenal. You know, the, the, could win the league on being the top goal scorers in the league. But what we're saying is that we need a striker when you're playing at Bayern Munich and it's nil nil, and that one chance comes and it's bang, it's a goal. Uh, and we've always had sort of players like that for a very over the years. If you look back at it, like you know, we've had Abamyang before that. You know, Van Persie. We had um, Henri. We've we've had goal scorers. All through our time, Ian Wright, you know what I mean? Like, so at the end of the day, yes, we do need that. Um, and but what we don't want to do is get into a position 
where we rely on that all the time. He contributes, but not rely on it. I think that Manchester City rely a lot on Haaland. And I think that back in the day, we relied too much on Ian Wright. So I don't want to go down that route. Um, but we need someone that's going to, um, you know, like bang it in there. As Adam says, you know what I mean? Henri at the Bernabeu. That's perfect example. Perfect example. Mm. We played really, really well that day and he, he he come up trumps. We haven't got that player in our team at the moment. Jesus has got all the attributes of that without the goal scoring finishing. We need someone that's good. Not, not just, and by the way, who's not just a finisher, Danny. He's got to, be, got to contribute a lot more than just finishing. Mm, facts, mate. Can't and I don't know who that is. Well, this is the next question from Daniel. It says, Dan and Lee, rumour has it, our three priority signings this summer are striker, midfield and left back. Who are your first choices? One name for each position. Well, I'm going to change it up a bit because I actually don't know that we're going to go and buy a left back because we've got, in our set of eyes, Timber, Tommy Asu, Zinchenko and Kivior and Kieran Tierney on loan. He will try and sift through that so that we have got two left backs, in my opinion, at least. And I think we've got four to choose from there. So I don't think left back is going to be an option. However, striker and midfielder, if you want me to name two, um, it would either be Bruno Gamayres and Alexander Isak from Newcastle or Frankie de Jong and Isak. If you want another striker, I'll go Victor Jokeres from Sporting Lisbon. Yeah. They're, the two, they're the two kind of four, four players Two of those four, basically, I'm saying. One strike. Like one and I, 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 I know people like laugh at me when I say mm. this. I take Gibbs White as well um, and, and sell uh, Smith Rowe because I think that he, he would do a good job. Do you know what we need, someone? And I, I felt it was yesterday. I don't know who this is, by the way, that can get the ball, right, and run 30 yards of it. Ball carrier. Thank you, De Jong, mate. That's what I'm looking at. Ball carrier. Yeah, that, that's it. Someone yeah. that can carry yeah. 30, yeah. 40 yards uh, beat a player and go there. I watched um, a little bit of uh, the West Ham game today. They had three players doing it. Picking the ball up when they're in that low block like what we was yesterday. But when they get the ball, they can get up the field without... Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, mm -hmm. haven't, got, we haven't got that in our team. We, we need that. We need that. Fair play, man. Fair play. This one comes in from Daniel. Says, what did you both think about Stan Kroenke and Josh attending the Bayern Munich game? We need to see Stan more often, not just the biggest games. If I'm honest with you, it was good to see for me. I know a lot of people give him stick, but actually you can't sit there and give him stick by saying, oh, look, they finally turned up. Well, at least they're there. You know what I'm saying? Both of them have gone there. Um, I'd like to see him more, Lee. I can't lie. I'd like to see him more at the club because they get a connection with the owners and the fan base. But um, hopefully they watch that and probably got maybe not a shot but maybe thought yeah we're not quite there are we need to do more in the summer to help him out that's what i'm yeah. hoping and, and and josh does go to uh a few more games than, than what his dad goes you know what i mean so yeah, yeah absolutely it does man um last couple to come in before we close this one comes in from red smoke it says isak reminds me of thierry Henry. the way he opens his body up when he finishes his class i must admit when he comes off that left, it does remind me of Thierry Henry. He's nothing like him because Thierry Henry, no one is like him. But in terms of his attributes, it does remind me of him. And if he could stay fit, I think it's a no-brainer, Lee, for us. Really yeah, think. and he's got Premier League, League experience, Dan. Premier yeah. League experience. And also, you could do a couple of, couple of things with Newcastle, you know, give him a couple of players. You know what I mean? Like, I would say, like, look, wherever he's at, if you want, you can have Smith Rowe and... I'm not saying Eddie, but you know what I mean. Some, some a bit, a bit of cash and all that. Like you know, Smith Road, sell Eddie. Uh, that, that could fund that deal if, if something, something like that. You know, some, something, something like that. Anyway. No, oh, I agree with you. Um, last question of the night, and it's quite a good one. Leads into the weekend, which we'll obviously do a little bit of chat about um, another time. Line up for Wolves, lads. Um, cool. I'll give you my line up if you want. Well, yours. So Ray is going to start. Ben White right back. Gabriel Saliba, Tommy Asu. That's the same back five as last night. I just keep it like that. Um, Thomas Party starts for me. Um, and then Declan Rice and Odegaard. If Odegaard's 100%, if not, I'd play Smith Rowe. But we need Odegaard, really. So hopefully he is all right. I know he got a knock, but he did play most of the game. Um, Jesus, right, wide right. Martinelli, wide left. And Trossard through the middle. That's what I'm going for. 
what are you going for, Lee? Um, I won't be. I've got. I've got right. Everybody you've said there, um, but I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go Jesus on the right. Havertz up top, and Trossard on the left. Okay, so you do Saka and Martinelli as subs then? Yeah? Yes. When the game gets a little bit like towards the end, 20, 30 minutes. And also, I'm going to then unleash them to. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I like that. I really do. Listen, guys, thank you so much for tonight. Honestly, thank you so much for being with us. There's been well over 500 of you the whole time. Let's see how many likes we've got, people. We've only got 150. Let's get that up to 250, please. All you got to do is click the like button, hit subscribe. Um, and if you can come over and uh, do the same for me on Football's 12th Man, it'd be much appreciated as well. We're nearly at 18. Okay, so come on, people, come and help me as well. well that would be amazing. Appreciate that, Lee. Uh, and appreciate all of you guys. Thanks all so much for your super chats. Thanks for your comments and your questions. Make sure you click the link in the pinned comment, which is, of course, the Surfshark VPN. Make sure, if you haven't got that already, that you are well in uh, with Surfshark. Obviously, myself and Lee are, so make sure that you are too. All you've got to do is click there, and it will take you straight there for you to get it. So make sure that you've got your VPN. Uh, Lee, I'll let you see us out, mate. Yeah, listen, it's been a bad week. It's been a, a, a horrendous week for us Gooners. But we go again on Saturday. Listen, it's Friday tomorrow. Enjoy the weekend. Let's get the job done on Wolves. And also, good luck to anybody doing the London Marathon on Sunday. And I can say this now, we know a few people that are doing it. Um, big up to Charlene, Sophie that are doing it. Um, my mate Terry's doing it, who I play football with as well. And if I've missed out anybody, if you are doing that, good luck and go do the business.